there, Griff Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Welcome, thanks for joining me today. In today's video, obviously, I've got the acoustic out. I'm gonna be doing an acoustic eight bar blues. So this is kind of take the chord progression from say, Key to the Highway or Worried Life Blues. There's a whole lot of eight bar blueses out there. We're gonna use the eight bar blues form. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a cool little trick that I'm doing here kind of with the minor blues scale, the major blues scale, I'm kind of borrowing a couple of chord notes. So there's actually, it might seem like it's an easy kind of thing to play. It's not very fast, it's not very complex rhythmically, but there's actually some really neat details in here that I hope you'll pay attention to and grab onto because they can make all the difference in the melodies. So let's go ahead and break it down. To begin with, before I get into, I'll say, the details of it. I want to make sure you're cool with the eight bar blues form. So I'm doing this in the key of A. So I've got a basic A chord. I'm really only playing these open fifth string and the fourth string here. And I'm doing what you might call the basic blues pattern. I'm going back and forth with my first and third finger between that second fret and fourth fret on the fourth string. Now if this is something that's out of reach for you, this is probably going to seem a little bit challenging and you're probably going to want to go back to something a little easier, more towards the beginning end of the spectrum. So I'm going to assume you've kind of got this basic groove down. Most people do. We're going to go from the A, one, two, three, four, down to the E, two, three, four. So notice I've got my just my low E to the D, which is open D. Now in reality, later on, I'm gonna use an entire D7 chord. So open fourth string, second fret third string, first fret second string, second fret first string. So hopefully you're hip to that. Again, fairly straightforward, I think, for most of us. Um, if you're not at that level yet, that's okay. We just gotta get you there. Back to the A, down to the E, and back to the A, and back to the E. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually use a turnaround. And I'll show you that here momentarily. So, Again, this, this basic, we have this basic groove. And what I really want to point out is that every acoustic blues song thing that you're ever going to play fundamentally has to have a groove and some chords. If you've ever heard me talk about the fact that music requires three things, it requires rhythm, it requires harmony, and it requires melody in that order. Okay, meaning the rhythm is actually the most important thing. The harmony or the chords is the second most important thing. And the third most important thing is the melody. Now, of course, you can argue, you know, there's all these famous melodies like from the Beatles or, you know, Christmas songs or, you know, Happy Birthday is obviously a very famous melody. I get that. You can be heavy on any one of the areas. But even a, a melody like Happy Birthday that everybody knows still has happy birth, right? Still has a rhythm, still has a way it goes. It still has chords. It's got a one, five and a four in it, okay? So we gotta have those things. Sometimes we take them for granted, but they're there. So when I say we're playing a groove, right? That's the groove we're playing, as opposed to something like, right? Which is a very different feel, same chord, very different feel. So keep that in mind because the groove is going to always be going on. It's kind of that thing that just goes on in the back of your mind all the time. Because what we're going to do is we're going to basically take some of those beats that we would normally pay the play the groove, we just take them out and replace them with something like that, for example. Okay, so that's just the first couple of bars. What I'm starting off with is what's commonly called a pickup. Now, the idea here is that I'm playing an A. So I wanna start, I mean, I'm a blues in A. 
okay? A7, A, however you want to look at it. But I want to play something kind of major sounding. So I'm thinking of the A major blues scale. You might know that as box two, starting on A. And so that's what I'm starting with, but I'm going to come in a little bit early. One, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh. Okay, so I'm doing the C, C sharp, E. And then I'm going to hit my A chord on beat one instead of down here. Normally this would be one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh. I'm going to have one, uh, two, three, uh, four. I'm going to go up to the eighth fret. I'm going to do eight, seven, five on four, uh, one. And I'm doing that because now I'm kind of switching over to a minor sound because I'm going to the five chord. Now in reality, I'm ending on E. So I'm doing just a little walk down to the E. I'm thinking about the chord that I'm going to. And so that's where I'm getting these notes from. I could have done the G sharp. That would actually be in, a, in an E major sound. That's what you'd get. But blues, that flat third kind of sounds better. Right? So we have one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh. So notice how I'm using this basic groove and I'm just replacing some of it with my melody. Right, the melody is there, it's the top note. But I'm filling in under it with a chord. That, that normally should have been down here, right? But I'm up here. That's part of my melody. Uh, two, uh, three, uh, four. Uh, and now I'm gonna go to the D. And instead of... I'm gonna keep that same melody, or same rhythm, but I'm gonna play, just let the chord ring out. Okay, now, this is where things get kind of interesting, because you might think, well, you know, what's the rhyme or reason to that? There's a little bit of rhyme or reason to it, but it's actually not that important. I'm simply playing from the low end to the high bounce, middle, I could have done that a lot of ways. I could have gone uh, low, high. There's actually a lot of ways I could have done that. This way is pretty common. Fourth, so notice that my left hand doesn't have to move at all. Fourth, third, first, second, first, second, third, first, fourth, third, first, second. Okay, so one, uh, two, a uh, three, a uh, four, a uh, one, a uh, two, a. Uh. Now I'm gonna jump up there to the seventh fret, and you might wonder, well, where the heck does that come from? Because it's not in the A minor blue sound, which is box one, which is what you would think I would be playing right now. But it does come from the major blue sound. So did it, is it there? Not really. It's actually more of the minor blue sound. But in the minor blue sound, I play a G there. But that D7 chord has an F sharp. So it wouldn't be any easier or harder, right? If I played 8, 5, 7, 5 versus I play 7, 5, 7, 5. It's not like any one is any easier. If anything, the 7 is easier than the 8. So if anything, I made this easier to play and I used a note out of the chord instead of a note out of the appropriate scale. So that's, like I said, this is, a, this is just a really fine detail, but man, it makes all the difference. So again, we have this two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, all right, and then we'll move on. 
But before we do that, let's go ahead and play this whole uh, line that's on your screen all together. One, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, uh, one, uh, two, uh, three, and uh, four. One, and uh, two, and uh, three, and uh, four, and uh, one, and uh, two, and uh, three, and uh, four, and uh. Okay, so hopefully that's not too bad. So now I have A in place of the beginning of the A groove. Right? But since I came from that beat one right there, then uh, two, uh, three. Now I'm going to go fifth fret on the third string. Right now I'm square in box one, getting a minor blues sound. C at the fifth fret, A, G, E. And I'm hitting the E note instead of the E chord. So again, I'm replacing that with the end of my melody. So I replaced, I just replace rhythm with melody once in a while. And then uh, two, uh, three, and then again, I'm gonna replace some melody. E, G, A, and I'm gonna hold that across the next one, and on beat one, I'm just gonna hit my open A string. So let's put that together. One, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, one. Now I'm going to have what's commonly called the turnaround. I'm going to put my, you can use any pair of fingers. You're probably going to think it's weird, but I use my third and fourth fingers. The reason I use my third and fourth fingers for this, I'm going to be at the fifth fret of the second string and the fifth fret of the fourth string. But the trick here is that I need fingers to lay down across everything else. Because notice all that clicking, right? I don't want anything else to ring out. If I use my second and third fingers, I can do the same thing. And my first finger kind of drags. If I use my first and second finger, it's a little harder to do this at least as far as I can, for me anyway, because now my fingers are in front. And with fingers in front, I don't have anything to drag behind. So again, use whatever you like. I, that's why I use my third and fourth fingers. Second and third is fine, because uh, still I have one to drag behind and beat things out. But I'm just gonna go from the fifth fret to the fourth, to the third, to the second, and then open D, E flat, E natural. Now, if I was playing a more traditional blues, of course, I would probably turn it around and just start again. In our case, we're just gonna play the one chorus, so we'll be done. So let's play this, this whole line by itself, and then we'll put the whole song together. One, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, 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 one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four. And when you kind of got the hang of it, what you're going to want to do here is, you know, do like I do. As I always say, just do as I do. It'll, it'll start to sink in. The counting and all that kind of stuff, just say what I say, do what I do. Feel free if you want. I'll, um, I'll leave a PDF near this video. You can print out the music and write the count on it if you want. I'm absolutely okay with that. It's not a crutch. It's not a, a problem. It's not a deficiency. It's just part of the learning process. Every other instrument on the planet counts when they play. We're the only ones that don't for some reason. It's really important. There's a really good reason why we do that. I'm sure you've heard me say it before, but it always bears repeating. So let's now play through the entire eight bars all together, nice and slow. Join me. Here we go. One, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, and uh, one, the uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, one, and uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, one. Uh, four, uh, 
want one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, one, uh, two, uh, three. And just to kind of give you an idea, there's no specific full speed on something like this. You just sort of play it as fast as you can, what feels comfortable to you. At a certain point, it might start to sound a little silly if you go too fast, but here's about how I would do it. A one, two, and three. <laughs> All right, and there you have it. Pretty straightforward, I think, by and large. Again, I will leave a PDF near this video so you can download it in case you want to come back to this and try it again, which I encourage you to do. This is the kind of thing you might have to watch the video two or three or four times and then kind of try it out for yourself nice and slow. Remember, the best process is to play it by yourself and count it first. Don't try to play it along with me count it out loud. It really, really, really makes a difference. I know I say it a lot. As I said, it bears repeating. <laughs> All right. So hope you have fun with it. Enjoy yourselves. Uh, if you like this kind of thing, I do have a course called Five Easy Acoustic Blues Songs, which has obviously stuff like this plus a whole lot more. Those songs are three full choruses in length each, so there's a lot more music there. If you want to check it out, I'll try and remember to leave a link near this video. And I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.